On December 7, 1941, bombs go off on Japanese ships. Hundreds of planes fly over Pearl Harbor and airfields catch fire. This is a sad time in American military history, but let's move on. There is a strange thing hidden behind a tarp on the asphalt, and no one knows what it is for. Think about this. The F-22 Raptor is a cutting-edge fighter jet that was never meant to be used in battle. Think about letting this jet loose during one of the most famous attacks in history. Could it stop the raid, or would it just be one plane out of hundreds? Anyway, what exactly fell in 1941? This jet can fly at Mach 1.5 without afterburners, which is more than 1,100 miles per hour. 1,770 kilometers per hour faster than anything that was around in 1941. Just think about it. It's heavily armed and almost impossible to find with radar. What is it carrying? The latest version of the IM-120 AMROM radar-guided air-to-air missile can hit targets up to 100 miles away. The other six missiles can hit targets more than 50 miles away. Two AIM-9 Sidewinder heat-seeking missiles and a single M61A2 Vulcan cannon, which is a 20mm six-barrel cannon that can fire 100 rounds per second and has 480 rounds in its magazine are for use in close quarters battle. This plane is faster, more accurate, and can fly higher than any other plane, but it still has some problems. It can track 20 targets at once with its radar, so it can fire before the enemy even knows it's there. In 1941, no one could fix it, fill it up, or even understand what it was doing, because there was no ground crew, spare parts, or modern fuel. Let's take a look at what the Raptor has to deal with. On December 7, 1941, the Japanese shocked the world by sending 353 planes to attack in two waves. The majority of the planes were Mitsubishi A6M0 fighters, Nakajima B5N torpedo bombers, and Aichi D3 A dive bombers. The Zero was quick and agile for its time but it could only go about 330 miles per hour, 530 kilometers per hour. The bombers were even slower, only going up to 230 miles per hour, 370 kilometers per hour. These planes didn't have computers, radar, or guided weapons. Their plan didn't rely on technology. Instead, it relied on tight formations, speed, and coordination. They could shoot at anything as long as they could see it coming. This worked before, when no one was ready. But now that someone is, the first wave of Japanese planes is coming. The Raptor takes off as soon as it sees the first formations and quickly climbs to a high altitude. It uses radar to look out over the horizon and lock onto several targets, some of which are more than 30 miles away. Even though the targets can't see it, they don't know it's there. After that, missiles are launched. The first AMRAM flies through the air. One second, the formation is tight, and the next, the planes disappear in the air. The bombers break formation without warning or return fire, and panic sets in. Fighters fly off in all directions, looking for the threat. No one knows where the attack came from, the Raptor swings out and hits again. At least a dozen planes are already gone by the time the Japanese pilots realize something is wrong. They've never seen anything like this before, and the scariest part is that they still haven't seen the jet. There are already another 170 planes flying the same route to Pearl Harbor. This time, though, the surprise is gone. Sirens are going off, and soldiers rush to man the anti-aircraft guns. Up above, one jet is changing the whole battle. But there are more than 300 enemy planes in the air, and no amount of technology can be everywhere at once. The jet is fast, but there is only one. As it spins, it chases fighters up high, 
but more bombers get through down low. The F-22 is winning in the air, but it won't last forever. When the Raptor is cruising smoothly with extra fuel tanks attached, it can fly over 16 nautical miles, or about 1,840 miles. It burns fuel quickly when there is a lot of fighting. After 30 to 40 minutes of dogfighting, it either lands or goes down, and landing makes things worse. The F-22 runs on JP-8 jet fuel, which is a modern military-grade blend that wasn't available in 1941. It would be impossible to refuel it because there isn't enough fuel, tools, or technical know-how. Also, it would be pointless to rearm it because AIM-1 and AIM-9 missiles didn't exist back then. And even if they did, no one would know how to load or fire them. No one to fix things or figure out what's wrong. No spare parts problems with sensors or systems don't go away. Even the simplest tasks can become impossible without the right tools or computers. The Japanese had good logistics in 1941. Their planes took off from nearby carriers that had fuel bombs and skilled deck crews. Every few hours, they could refuel and launch dozens of planes. They had practiced this exact attack down to the last second. The Raptor was the best at flying, but once it ran out of gas or ammo, it couldn't go back. The question was, could it stop the attack? Pearl Harbor wasn't just an air battle. It was a planned attack on ships, airfields, and other important things. Eight U.S. battleships were damaged or sunk in the real attack in 1941. Could one F-22 change this path a little bit? The Raptor does dominate, but it has its limits. Still, 188 planes were destroyed on the ground. 159 were damaged, and more than 2,400 Americans died. With perfect missile and cannon fire, you can shoot down a dozen enemy planes, eight with missiles and a few more with the Vulcan cannon, depending on how many rounds it takes to disable each one. But this isn't enough to stop a whole fleet. However, it could save lives and damage ships by hitting bombers before they get to enemy territory. There are too many planes, too many points of view, too many goals. There is no such thing as a perfect F-22 mission. Some bombers will get through and others will be damaged. It doesn't change the fact that the disaster happened. It just changes how big it is. What about the bigger picture? The shock alone would be hard on both sides. It's a mess for the Japanese pilots. Planes disappear before they even see the danger. The whole plan starts to fall apart, and the American troops on the ground look up and see something they can't explain. A jet that no one has ever seen before, easily taking out the enemy. They don't know what it is, but they know it's on their side. It wouldn't stop Pearl Harbor, but it would scare the attackers, boost morale, and maybe, just maybe, turn fear into a fighting chance. The war still starts, but not in the same way. It might go in a different direction, but one thing is for sure. One jet can't protect every ship airfield and soldier, especially if it doesn't get caught. Please watch the video that is playing right now.